Welcome to the Dr. Mudgill Podcast. This is episode 77. Uh, it's been a great week. We are in, uh, you know, approaching Mother's Day, a very important weekend. Um, Nick's won last night, which is good. So uh, we, uh, we're still alive. And hopefully we'll continue to uh, be successful as these playoffs continue. Miami's been tough, um, but, you know, New York, we're pretty tough too. Um, looking forward to a great weekend. Weather is amazing. I think we're going to have an amazing Mother's Day weekend here too, so that's going to be great. Um, and this week, uh, we are going to talk about uh, a question that was actually asked by a friend of mine um, who actually owns an amazing laser company that I happen to be the medical director of, uh, but I'll talk about all that in a second. So the question was, um, thoughts on a podcast on exosomes? They're blowing up and no one knows what's what. No pressure which I said, of course, I'm happy to do it. And I said, would be very cool, man. They are a hot topic and everyone is confused. So I'm going to get into it. Exosomes are a hot topic. I get asked about it a lot by my patients. Um, and there's a lot of technology being developed around exosomes. And, you know, is it, are they, is it a yay or is it a nay? Is it, you know, truly beneficial to the skin or is it BS? And I'm going to get into that stuff <clears throat> in a second. But first, I just want to talk about Cartessa Aesthetics, which is... Um, a medical aesthetic device company, um, which is very different from other laser device companies that are out there. So, you know, if you're going to get like a car and, you know, you go to like the Chevy dealership, they have their Corvette, which is like their, you know, their badass signature car. Uh, you go to the Ford dealership, they got their Mustang, which is their badass car. You know, Dodge has their Viper, which is their badass car. Um, but very few manufacturers have all badass cars, right? Cartessa is a company that kind of cherry picks the best of class in various, you know, for various indications. So it's kind of like, you know, they have the the Ferrari, the Bentley, the Rolls Royce, the Lamborghini, the Aston Martin of like every different device, you know. So um, I, uh, Gabe, who owns um, Cartessa, he founded it, uh, you know, amazing guy, very um, insightful and, you know, really an innovator in, in this, in the business world when it comes to medical device technology. Um, he asked me a couple of years ago to, to be their medical director and, you know, I'm involved with some of the, you know, the, their, their products, et cetera. Um, but, um, when he asked me to record this podcast about exosomes, you know, I, I just, I just couldn't say no. So let me explain to you what exosomes are first. So exosomes are these extracellular vesicles. I know that sounds very technical. I'll break it all down that all cells produce, you know, stem cells, particularly they produce a lot of them. Um, you know, other cells do produce, produce them. And, you know, we've known about these probably for the last like three decades or so, but, you know, in recent years, they've been starting to uh, become incorporated in, you know, aesthetic medicine, also, you know, in other fields in medicine as a means to deliver therapy treatment that, you know, that sort of stuff. So, um, what an exosome is, is basically like the, the cells, they basically create these like little like balloons, essentially, which allow cells to communicate with their environment. So in these little balloons are like proteins that, you know, uh, talk to other cells or, or stimulate something to happen in the area around the cell. Um, there's mRNA, you know, mRNA what was in what was in the COVID vaccines. There's microRNA, um, <clears throat> you know, a whole bunch of stuff is like packaged into these little balloons and those those balloons will generally you know attach to some other cell or communicate with some other cell and tell them hey i need you to do this like as for instance this is like exosomes you know gone bad you know cancer cells can do this and you know they basically will create these exosomes and communicate with the environment and say hey you know feed me more blood so i can grow bigger um so you know a lot of attention has been paid to exosomes uh, recently and you know for lots of things you know delivering medications so targeted delivery of like say like cancer medications or immunotherapy for you know treating malignancies and that sort of thing uh, possibly for delivering um, vaccines or you know in our world uh, to deliver some kind of optimized aesthetic outcome so basically if you get exosomes that are harvested from say stem cells which, um, you know, can they can be those cells can be harvested from like fat or umbilical cord blood or that sort of stuff. And, you know, those cells are, you know, generally, you know, telling the environment around it to be, you know, stimulate wound healing and, you know, um, stimulate collagen and you know, all sorts of good stuff. So in dermatology and plastic surgery, 
um, exosomes have been thought of as like an adjunct to other treatments. So just to take it a step back, you know, in probably like the last like five or six years, we've been doing a lot of, and I'm sure you've like, you know, seen a lot of this on Instagram, um, you know, PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, PRF, platelet-rich fibrin, you know, the vampire facial, which the Kardashians made famous, was coupling uh, microneedling with PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. So basically you get microneedled and then you'd rub the platelet-rich plasma over your skin. The platelet-rich plasma is basically when you draw someone's blood, you spin it down, and you get out what the fluid called platelet-rich plasma, which is filled with lots of proteins that stimulate stem cells and stimulate fibroblasts, which are cells that produce collagen and you know, facilitate wound healing and that sort of stuff. So, you know, that's kind of been very hot, you know, in, in dermatology and plastic surgery and in other fields too, orthopedic surgeons use it to facilitate, you know, wound healing and joints, et cetera. Um, so, you know, in my practice, for instance, we do a lot of that. We do a lot of PRF treatments for hair where we draw our patient's blood, we spin it down, we get the PRF out, which is platelet rich fibrin, and then we inject that back into the scalp and, you know, to stimulate the stem cells and the hair follicles to start, you know, producing hair, either waking them up to produce hair if they're sleeping or, you know, existing follicles to help them produce, you know, healthier, thicker hair. Um, so exosomes is almost like a next generation of that because, you know, what we see, like say, for instance, with like a PRF injections, like some patients have very, very dramatic results. You know, their PRF is just like, you know, booming with proteins and growth factors, et cetera. And, you know, they have some of my patients who have actually tried to talk out of doing PRF treatments have had the most miraculous hair growth I've ever seen. Um, and some patients have a more modest result, you know, and I think a lot of that boils down to the actual quality of their PRP or PRF. You know, everyone has, you know, just different quality blood, you know, proteins in their blood and that sort of thing. Um, so what exosomes try to do is they try to take that variability out of the equation. And, you know, these are like lab produced exosomes, which have like the exact same contents in each exosome. You know, they're very, you know, they're made very scientifically and very meticulously. And then if you can deliver those exosomes into like say post laser or you know, in some way into the skin after you do a procedure, it'll optimize the outcome of that procedure. So as a for instance, so in my practice, you know, we do, we typically will combine the PRP with fractional laser treatment. So basically we'll do the laser treatment and then we'll infuse the PRP using an aqua gold device, which is like this basically, um, this device that has like micro, that has like very, very thin channels, which allow us to put implant or sort of stamp the PRP into our patient's skin. So it gets to where um, the fibroblasts are living, which is a layer just below the surface of our skin called the dermis. Um, exosomes function very much the same way. So after say like a laser procedure or microneedling, you apply exosomes to the skin or you can some, you know, maybe we can infuse them using this aqua gold device. Um, to stimulate uh, the cells that are responding to the laser treatment, namely like fibroblasts and wound healing cells um, <clears throat> in the skin to have a more robust response, which will give you an optimized cosmetic outcome. So there are a few treatments that are out there now. I'd say, you know, it's, it's very in the very early stages of, of this technology and this application of exosomes in aesthetic medicine. But... Um, I do think it's promising. Um, I'm excited to see, you know, the results of using exosomes. Um, like I said, we already do a lot of PRP and PRF in my office. You know, exosomes, I think, either might be an adjunct to that or it might, you know, it might be superior to that. You know, I'm not sure yet. I don't think anybody is. No one really knows the answer. But in a nutshell, that's what exosomes are. So exosomes are these little vesicles that cells produce, you know, all cells produce them to communicate with the environment around them. Um, but, you know, harvesting or, you know, manufacturing exosomes in a laboratory environment, um, you know, but using stem cells and using those exosomes for an aesthetic application, namely like post laser, um, the logic behind that I think is, uh, is, is pretty solid. You know, I do think that there will be a pretty significant utility for the use of exosomes in the dermatology and plastic surgery world. So I hope that gives you a little bit more insight on what exosomes are. You're going to start seeing it in all the beauty magazines and I'm sure all over the gram and, you know, TikTok and that sort of stuff. Um, so with that, I hope you all have a wonderful, restful weekend and are ready to enjoy uh, ready to crush the week ahead. Don't forget to have uh, you know spend some quality time with your mamas. Uh, you know, without mamas, 
there ain't nothing. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Let's get it.